What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. If you are new here, my name is Holly Franklin Basechick and I do a lot of content on the bass guitar. I do music theory, product reviews, tutorials, things like that. So I hope you stay and enjoy other videos that I have and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to give you the best stretching exercises for bass guitar. Now it is very important to stretch your fingers and your hands when you're playing, before you start playing songs and whatnot, just so that your hands and your fingers start to get warmed up and get the blood flowing and it makes it easier when you're playing. Um, sometimes we tend to play without warming up. We may mess up when we do a lot of muting or a lot of fret buzz. So I really want you to make sure that you use these stretching exercises before you start actually playing songs to really get your hands warmed up. I also have another video on the best warm-up exercises, but it's not on my channel. It's on Bass Musician Magazine's channel if you want to check it out. And the article and the full article is on their website as well. And if you don't want to support them, support them. They're great people over there and there's lots of great contributors and great content out there. So I'm going to show you a couple stretching exercises, but even before we pick the base up, if you are comfortable and able to do so, you may hear my cat as well. She loves coming into the videos. Anyways, so why don't you take your hands, why don't you stretch your fingers. Stretch your hand back if you can. And you can feel the stretch in your wrist. Now this is if you're able to do so. If obviously you have issues with your wrist or with your fingers, then obviously don't do that. And just go right to the other exercises. And do that a couple times if you're able to. Put your base on. Make sure your strap length is appropriate for when you are playing, both sanding and sitting. That's the best tip, one of the best tips um, of many from Billy Sheehan. So, quick tip for you there. But what I want you to do is I want you to start doing each finger and half step intervals up and down your fretboard. I just want you to keep going. And I want you to do that on every single string. And take it slow. Take it slow and you can plug in or you can do it unplugged like what I'm doing. And that will just help you to start warming up and getting your fingers warm and going across all the strings and all the frets. Now you can do it one string at a time or you can alternate strings. So if you did, you could do like the spider walk technique, which is one of my favorites. And that's a really great one for stretching your fingers across the strings. Or you could do one string, go over to the next one, same frets. And then from the fret that you left off on, do it again, things like that. So first we're gonna start with the perfect fifth stretch. So this stretch is great to get you started. So we're gonna start, this is the beginner one. We're gonna do D, which is the fifth on our A, and we're gonna use our pointer. And then we're going to go over to the D string. We're gonna do A with, which is the seventh fret on the D string using our ring finger. But the perfect fifth stretch, we're five steps away. So D, E, F, G, A is five steps away. And then five steps away from A is E. So we're gonna take, um, so what you can do is you can take your pointer on A, and do your ring on E. So this would be the beginner. And then advanced would be same thing, start off D to A, and then A, we wouldn't put our pointer there, we'd leave our ring, and we'd use our pinky. D 
sharp as well. And then we're doing the one, five, seven stretch. So that's moving from our root note to the fifth of the note and then the seventh. So in this particular example, I didn't lay out a specific key signature, but if you want to go technical and use a specific scale, you absolutely can. Same with the perfect fifth stretch, um, but we're keeping it with D again, shocker. So we're starting on D with our pointer. We're gonna go to A with our ring, and then we're gonna go to E with our pointer, and that's a beginner. And then in advanced, we're doing D with our pointer, A with our ring, E with our pinky. So very similar to the perfect fifth stretch, but instead of ending on the perfect fifth and then starting on the perfect fifth and going to the perfect fifth from there, we're actually just doing a one, five, seven progression, which is very common if you are learning tapping. It's a very easy progression to do. Next stretch is a V stretch and the name comes from the shape. So when you are doing this technique, it is in the shape of a V. So we're gonna start on the F sharp on the E string with our pointer. We're gonna go over to the A string, C sharp, which is the fourth fret with our ring. We're gonna go over to the D string to the E and that's going to be our pointer. And then we are gonna go back to the A string with our ring and then we're going to go back to the E string for the F sharp with our pointer. And that is a V shape and that's in one octave. And then we're going to go up an octave. We're going to do pointer with the F sharp. And then our C sharp is going to be the ring, which is our 11th fret on the D. And then E is going to be the 9th fret on the G. Go back to C sharp and then F sharp. And then we're also going to utilize A. So we're going to do the fifth on the E with our pointer, seventh on the A string, which is our, we're just going to use our ring, and then G, which is the fifth fret on the D string, utilizing our pointer. And then we're going to go up an octave. And then pointer to pinky stretch is our last stretch. And this is really good. It's a very important stretch because your pinky is a very weak finger. So we tend to not want to use it because it is a bit weaker and it doesn't always come off sounding that great. So this stretch is probably the most important one you will be doing. So we're going to do one string, two string, and then alternate strings. So we're going to start on D. And we're going to go to F, utilizing our pinky and this is on one string, so five to eight pointer pinky. And what you can do to make it a little bit easier, you have your pointer finger. When you move your pinky finger over, you can lift up the pointer finger a little bit. Or you can keep it on there. But you may find it easier to pick it up a little bit. And then two strings, we're doing D to B flat, same thing can lift up that pointer finger. And then alternate strings, D to E flat. See, I'm picking up the pointer finger so it doesn't clash. That's something to keep in mind when you are going across multiple strings is kind of picking that finger up so that it doesn't clash with the other notes. Unless you want, unless you want to ring together. What's going on everybody? I forgot to do an outro. So I wanted to say thank you for joining me in the video today and please like and subscribe to my channel.